evening, and welcome to Robert Land's Vids. Sponsored as always by vast amounts of beer and some guitars. Sponsored by no one actually, it just, just happens. If I got paid for this it'd be better obviously, wouldn't it? I'd work harder, I'd edit things and I'd put special effects all over it. it looks like a special effect, looks like a spider jumping out of your screen, doesn't it? Blah, 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 blah. The beer of the day, we'll get on that first, is Citra. It's a beer I've had before on here and I like it rather a lot because it makes you thirsty. I'm just, I had a sip of it. So, oh, Oakham Breweries, Citra, 4.6%, 4.6%. See, I'm working, I've changed the delivery around, you notice that, I've had another pause. I don't think that's, that's quite as good as one. I'll do it again the old way, I think, you know. 4.6%, I just, oh, get it down your neck anyway, it's just, oh, oh, it's like beer that goes down your throat and then fr someone throws a handful of sawdust down, you instantly get really thirsty, as you can see this isn't going to last very long, but it's 4.6%, 4.6%. I just completely cocked that one up, haven't I? Anyway, that's what I I don't know what you did yesterday, but I had a massive erection until six o'clock this morning. Pardon? Oh, the UK had a general election, and I was, really? He could have told me. He said, go in a box and, and leave a mark on that piece of paper, and I, fair enough. And uh, that's, that's, well, that's a spoiled ballot paper then, probably, isn't it? <laughs> But we all voted, we all voted, we all voted, some people won, some people lost, but we're all winners and we're all losers, so, um, you know, they're all bastards, aren't they, just with different faces on, really, so everyone's a winner and everyone's a loser, which is it's democracy in action, really. That sound effect should have been more relevant, but it really wasn't, was it? Look at this, it's a guitar I haven't used for quite a long time, it's the Epiphone, uh, Les Paul, you can tell by looking at the shape. See, let me phone Les Paul. I need to say gold top because it's obviously it's gold, but see, you know. But it's actually quite a sweet guitar. It's a Korean Samic built, I assume. I think yes, it is. It's got an S on the front of the uh, the um, serial number, unless it's S for serial number. That'd be stupid. Could be an SN for SN serial number. <laughs> Still be hearing that one. No one really knows. Look, plectrum, purple plectrum, purple plectrum, purple shirt, purple shirt, you see? Red sofa, put it down, <clears throat> look at the other way. Oh look, there it is, quite obvious, found it again. Put it down there again, look the other way, oh look, <clears throat> there it is again. The other night, well I'll tell you what happened first of all, this flat, disgraced land has been eating stuff. It's been eating things, and the other week it ate I keep my little tuner, my guitar tuner, in a placky bag, you see, because that way, because uh, people smoke in here and all that sort of stuff, and you don't want smoke being blown into the microphone on here because that gets clogged up with shite and dust and all sorts of stuff, and um, 
it makes it, you know, if you're trying to tune an acoustic or something for it, it's, um, it's crap. So I always keep my tuner in a little plastic bag. You can wrap around it and sealed so you don't get any, any smoke and shit in it. And when I want to use it, I take it out the bag. And then what happens is the bag gets put there, right next to me. Tuner goes on top, tune my guitar, put it up, put it back in the bag, jobs are good. Did this the other day last week and the bag mysteriously disappeared into the, well, if I knew where it disappeared into it, it wouldn't be disappeared, would it? It'd be visible. So, never turned up, never in two weeks, it's just freaking gone. No idea where whatsoever, whatsoever, and the tuner only ever lives right there, there, or there, when I'm using it. And it goes straight in the bag and the thing goes back. Where did it go? Not this, but it's a different bag, obviously, because it would be stupid old to talk. Oh, there it is. Um, so where did that go? So that was number one. And then the other night I was doing a hangout. And um, awesome business, guys. That was bloody awesome. Really enjoyed that. And uh, we'll see you again on the next one pretty soon, hopefully. Um, uh, that was with uh, Jay, you know, Debot, Music One by One. Uh, Carlos was on there. Grob was on there. Awesome time. Had real fun. So uh, thank you for that. Thanks for the uh, invite on that one. And I'll do that again very soon, hopefully. Um, and I started playing some stuff with a thumb pick. Now, given that the other pick that I just put on there was purple on a red thing and a pink thing, you can still see it. This is white, you know, white. I've got a black cut, black rug down here. I've got terracotta stone floors. There's very little white apart from on my keyboard. Ebony and ivory. Living together in perfect harmony and working the room. Um, because you can't have ivory on a keyboard because you you know you could shoot an elephant in the face for it and pull its nose off or something and stick it up there and then uh, rip it. So you can't have that. It's stupid. And Ebony's probably a protected hardwood anyway under the CITES agreement. So um, it's a stupid song, and I think whoever wrote that should be taken out and um, really flogged. You know, for about thirty seconds. Not not for a long time because it's only a song. You can't take you know songs and music too seriously because it's only a collection of you know notes and just air movement. And uh, what else do we know as an air movement? That sort of thing. That's another type of air movement. And it's all the same thing. And so, uh, you know, music. Uh, why bother? God, blimey. Right, that's it. Goodbye. And um, thumb pick. And again, the thumb pick lives right in front of my sound card. My sound card's there, out of shot. You have to use your imagination now, you see. Oh, 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 special effects. Oh, oh, oh. And it just sits there in front of my sound card because my sound card's got a really annoying green light. It's not annoying because it tells me that it's on, but I know it's on because I've just turned the bloody thing on. I don't need a green light in my face. I hate any things. Just not, uh. So I put this in front of the sound card and it just sits right in front of the light so I can't see it. When I need to use a thumb pick, I put it on my thumb. <laughs> do some of that and, went, you know, and put it there next to me on the sofa which is red so you can see there look white red white red you can see it from here there not that effing thumb pick just disappeared again into a ah, space mate a ah, freaking space so, um, it's not on the sofa, right? It's not on the sofa, it's not under the cushions, it's not under here, it's not falling here, it's not under the guitar, it's not even under the sofa, which I went, I, I ripped the sofa out the other day and went under there and cleaned everything. There's about you know, eight foot of dust and shite, and uh, by the time I dusted up, I had enough fur from under there to basically build three rabbits, so that was quite good. Um, they're on eBay at the moment, so uh, they've got no guts, but you know. So, the thumb pick, it's not on the floor. It's not shooting elephants and cutting down fucking trees and all that. It's not there. It's not on the, the, the desk of many things, the box of many things, which has got, you know, I keep all me paintbrush and me I mean, pens and pencils and me effing nail file because, you know, use fingernails and things like that when I play the guitar and I've got me, you know, just to just in case I don't even know how long it is and, uh, you know, or how warm it is, you know, all that business is sits on there and I've also got the, um, you know, my Roboland, um, says Roboland on there from my old mate Monica, 
And that's the stuff that's on there is a couple of pairs of old spectacles and some speakers and some shit. There's not a bloody thumb pick there. The thumb pick's not on the floor. I've got a, a rug here, which is black. It's black, you know? A white thumb pick should show up. Where's it gone? There. So I'm using another thumb pick and they're just like a bit picky. You know? When you get the new one, they're all really pointy and all that. And it takes a while to wear them down naturally into the proper shape and all that and get like, mm, 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 with it. And just so bollocks, really. This, this the thing with this thing, bollocks. In fact, double bollocks, because arse. I'll put it there. So no idea where that went. I thought maybe I'd gone to sleep with it on my thumb and it was in my bed and it wasn't. And I thought maybe I'd put it down somewhere else around Disgrace Lands and it's on the works. It isn't. I put it everywhere, looked everywhere. It's gone. Now, this is nothing unusual, obviously, because we all know plectrums are made of some mysterious material. I refer to it as extrapolon. It's something from the fourth or fifth or maybe eighth dimension. And as soon as it hits a flat surface, it just disappears. It's uh, probably the same material they make socks out of. So when you chuck two into a washing machine, only one comes out. And, um, you know, it's like, uh, this sort of, it's probably at the time and space continuum thing where you get two things clashing and something weird happens. It's like every single river or canal on the planet, you walk past, you're going to find a pair of trousers and one shoe. Why is that? And how the hell do you, you can understand someone losing a shoe on the way home from the pub, going to do their shoes up, falling flat on their face and one falls off or something. But your trousers, what do you say in America, pants, that's just being vulgar, really, isn't it? That's just, that's just vulgar. So, you know, bloody plectrums, eh? Who needs them? So, good stuff. Thirsty beer, plectrums, erections. What else is there? Uh, Friday night, Canadian Grand Prix this weekend in Canada, of all places, which is gonna be freaking awesome, because it's a bloody awesome track, and you have the Wall of Champions, which is never a nice place to visit, but, uh, you know, I'm sure someone will, and uh, lots of people have been spinning off this week. Just having the practice session, everyone's been going, uh, uh, having a real bad time of it, so uh, it should be a pretty exciting race. Um, mm. Ooh. Ooh. 4.6%. 4 4.6%. <coughs> <coughs> uh, some good news. We've got um, a new Happy Orange Balloon album coming out. Um, uh, a lot of you will know that I've been working on an album with my old buddy Blaze, Blaze Gammy, and we're doing uh, a, an album by uh, Blazing Chaos, which is the name of our duo that we've been working together since we were kids, really. Um, and that's another project which I'll, I'll say more about when we've got more stuff happening. Thanks to uh, those of you who checked out the links that I put on the last thing. We've got a couple of almost finished uh, tracks, I uh, had a dig at, sort of had a go at final mastering and that sort of stuff and um, I'm still learning but we're getting there, um, put a couple of tracks up um, on Roboland Soundcloud or Soundcloud Roboland, uh, whatever, go and have a look if you're interested and you'll hear a couple of Blazing Chaos tunes, um, as I say they're almost there, I know what I've got to do to make them better and it's just a matter of getting in there and going like that, um, do songs have nipples? Ours do. Awesome. Our songs have nipples. It's our USP, whatever that means. Um, <clears throat> so, songs with nipples, massive erections, the horn for six hours, and things which disappear when they hit the surface. So that's that. But Happy Orange Balloon um, is a project that I worked on um, from about 2007, I think it was, through to 2012, with a guy called Danny La Romeo. Uh, Sicilian guy, really, really lovely bloke, amazing producer, really like pff, um, interesting ideas and interesting ways of going about things. And we met up on MySpace years ago. We both had music profiles on there, and um, I've done quite a few collaborations with quite a few different people. And it got to, he'd noticed my my, pro, my 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 music site on there, and I'd noticed his, and it was like we need to work together. And um, we spent about five years doing an album together, um, which was Happy Orange Balloon, the original album. Uh, I was on about half of those tracks on that one. And then when that one finished, uh, I took off and did some other things. I wanted to you know, do, do another project. I've been, been doing the Blazing Chaos project. But we've got a ton of old archive stuff. Um, and 
Uh, so there's a new album coming out. I'll give you details on that uh, when I've got more details on it. it just been, I think it's just being pressed at the moment. It's been mastered by uh, Kramer again, who mastered the previous one. So nice work on that. Um, we've got the cover done by Hawk Alfredson, which is Hawk Alfredson, which is really really cool. Um, and I've got there are two tracks on there uh, which I am involved in. Um, the rest is either Dan. Danilo solo stuff, or there's another one with uh, Fiona Harmon and Nick Munn, who are actually mates of mine who live here, in, in the village here, so um, that will be out soon. Happy Orange Balloon is sort of electronic and spacey and um, visual and disconnected and um, proper effing weird actually, it's real some real <laughs> sort of music, I love it, it's very very interesting stuff and um, so that's coming out, so that's been really nice. And it was a mad rush the other week to get all the paperwork done, uh, to get uh, the registration, the publishing sorted out, because it's been published in Italy. So that was a bloody panic. Um, having to get something printed and then something else scanned and then sent. And I know one person locally that's got a printer and when we got there, the ink was on its last legs and then we went to scan something and that was like, <laughs> It was just a real, real nightmare. And eventually I got all the stuff to uh, Dan that afternoon on the day of the deadline. It's all gone off, all been registered. Uh, and I think as far as I know now that it's it's in the pressing stage. Um, or it might be returning any day now from, from the press. So that will be pretty awesome. And I'll give you more information on that um, when I get it. But if you're into electronic music and um, you know, pretty, pretty spacey shizzle really, you know what I mean? It's, um, that sort of side of what I do. Um, it will be bloody awesome, all right? So lots of extended sort of synthesizer, ambient -y, bubbly, wobbly. <laughs> uh, but if you want a taster of that, I think on my Reverb Nation page, I think it's on there. It might even be on my SoundCloud as well. There'll be a tune called Driving Through Vegas. Um, and there's probably also another one called uh, uh, Traffic Traffic, traffic light sweet, orange traffic light sweet. On the album, it's called Traffic Orange Jam because they're different versions. And uh, Driving Through Vegas is now called Driving Through Las Vegas on that album because they're, you know, because it is. Um, so you'll be out here, sort of preview versions of those on my SoundCloud. If they're not on there, you'll also find them on my Reverb Nation page, Reverb Nation Robo Land, and there's about 40 different tunes on there. In case any of you don't know this, uh, and what fancy going and hearing some of the music I've been recording over the last uh, 10 years or so, um, lots of guitars, lots of samples, lots of weird wobbly business. There's stuff straight from pure acoustic jams to live jams with other guests to um, recording material that I've done myself and produced here. So. Um, yeah, check out Roboland on Reverb Nation and Roboland on SoundCloud. And you can also check out Happy Orange Balloon, all one word, uh, on SoundCloud as well. And um, I think the album will probably be available on Bandcamp as well, but I'll give more details when it happens. But it's been a pretty damn good week for that. So um, it's nice, it, you know, it's always nice to have something, something released and that. And, um, it's nice to actually have something officially published now as well. I think that's, that's one of the first things I've actually ever done that with. Um, I was on an album years ago by a guy called uh, Carl Stern, and the album was called uh, Killing Whales to Save Hippies, I think it was. Um, and I'm on a track called uh, Arigato. That's interesting, so you can go check out. I think it's on Amazon. Uh, Carl Stern, K A R L S T I R. NER, who's actually sort of a classical Austrian zither player and a classical arranger and all this sort of stuff, but did some amazing, amazing work with electronics and stuff like that. And uh, there's also another guy called, what's his name? Oh God, Herman. Oh, I can't remember. I'm really, really sorry. It was a long, long time ago, about 12 years ago or something. But lots of music out there, lots of happening, and I'm now in the process of putting together some ideas for the Roboland uh, recordings uh, to get something else released uh, under my own, you know, my own name, but Roboland, Robo, Roboland name. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, and at the moment I'm just sort of collecting a few ideas and messing around with different instruments and things like that, trying to get uh, some sparks and some ideas going. So it's pretty exciting times here. Um, I don't like to have more than one project on the go at a time because my brain just explodes and I can't handle it. Um, so. It's nice to um, 
you know, it's just nice to get one thing wrapped up and move on to another. So, been loving doing the Blazing Chaos stuff. It's been a real blast working with Blaze again. It's the first time we'd worked together in, I think it's like 15 years or so. And so it's just been fantastic the last few years working on that with my best mate, you know, just it's just awesome. Uh, such a good thing to be able to do. And, and Blaze has written some killer songs for that album. Uh, but we're coming to the end of that project. We just say we've just got the final mastering and, and a little bit of tweaks to do here and there. So I'm moving on and I'm doing uh, my own thing for the next few years. And really looking forward to it. I've just got to make sure that if anyone says, Rob, do you fancy getting involved in this project? I just say, no, I bloody well don't. I'm doing my own thing. Because <laughs> that'll be another five years tied up where I can't do any more Robo Land stuff. Not that I'm moaning, but I'm British, so we moan about everything anyway. Anyway, 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 anyway. Um, yeah, let's have a bit of a groove and we'll uh, sign off for this. I hope I don't get a copyright strike. This is from Quist Jam uh, channel. Uh, John Schofield style, New Orleans groove backing track based on the sort of style of Do Like Eddie. And this was something that uh, Debot uh, Music 1x1, Jay over there, was, was messing with the other night. And, um, and Grob, I think, was messing with this. He's actually doing some good stuff with it, Grob. So, nice work, matey. Um, you have electricity under that bridge. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> That's pretty nice. So I'm going to sign out. B flat. Who the bloody hell played? Because that way they might leave me alone. Alright, take care and I will see you on the next one. Have fun!